Omaru Domo is a sophisticated and graceful girl with delicate and feminine appeal dripping from every move she makes. From teachers and school students to close friends, everyone is in awe of her and thinks of her as someone from the heavens. Except for her elder brother because he sees the true Omaru at home, who is a selfish, ungrateful, ill-mannered, complacent, lazy, and undisciplined girl that does nothing but waste her time and make his life harder. That's why Tahei, older brother, addresses her as Himoto, a slang word for for a woman who acts properly in public but is lazy at home. All of us share a bit of Umaru's personality, but then some of you that are mature adults will be able to relate with Taihei more. So let's take a sneak peek into Umaru's and Taihei's life and what the two go through during the day. Whenever at home, Umaru turns into her chibi form and wrecks havoc with her antics. We get the first glimpse at Umaru's true self when we see her suddenly realizing that a new chapter of Jun Peace has just been released and she needs to buy it. Taihei declines and asks her to buy it tomorrow on the way back from school. However, that would reveal Umaru's true identity, and her woven web of lies will be caught. At first, Umaru throws a tantrum, but seeing Taihei's determination, she wonders if he's developing an immunity to them and tries becoming her nice, public self. But Taihei knows Umaru inside out and is still unmoved. Annoyed by her brother's persistence, Umaru starts to cry her eyes out and roll on the bed relentlessly till her brother finally gives in. The following day at school, when her friends ask what happened to her, seeing her red eyes, she blames it on her brother, telling them that the two of them had a bit of an argument. Later that day, as Taihei comes home from work, he finds Umaru talking to her pet hamsters. When he inquires about what she's trying to do, she first makes fun of him and tells him that she's trying to teach them tricks so she can get the most viral pet video and win 1 million yen. At first, Taihei's happy that she's finally taking some interest in other things apart from snacks, anime, and games, only to realize that she's doing it for nothing but to satisfy her greed. Some days later, Taihei, on his Himoto's insistence, plays an FPS game but keeps dying till he finally recalls that he has to get the groceries. Angered by the interruption, Umaru comes out of her chibi form and accompanies him while pouting. Being the mature adult he is, Taihei decides to handle it by being kind and taking her to the food court, only to be frowned upon by his Himoto after she drops her ice cream. As the two are returning home, Taihei suddenly recalls that Umaru once asked him to play games with her the whole day if he wanted forgiveness. As the memory strikes him, he immediately asks Umaru, how about we pick up that game from where we left off? Just like that, Umaru and Taihei make up. A brand new sun rises on our characters, and one fine day as Taihei comes home from work, he finds everything in his house in order. Despite Umaru's arrival, he wonders what's going on, only to find that a friend from school, Ebina, is at his place, and Umaru has to put on her public persona in front of her. Seeing it as an opportunity, Taihei asks Ebina, Umaru's friend, to visit whenever she likes. As Ebina steps outside their home, Umaru transforms back into her chibi form. Satisfied with his sister's work, this time around, Taihei doesn't scold her for drinking cola and appreciates that she did something. However, as he's going to fill the bath, he finds stacks of boxes in the bathtub. Angered by this, he yells at her only to find his Himoto complaining about the flavor of the takoyaki he bought for her on the way. As the days progress, we find Umaru asking her brother to enter a competition for a human-sized cat plushie called Necolumbus. Just for his sister's sake, Taihei ends up calling off an extra shift, but when he finds out that it was just for a plushie, Taihei is furious. However, in her likable public persona, she tells Taihei that it was simply because she wanted him to rest a bit. Falling for his sister's tactics, Taihei enters the tournament from one gate, while Umaru enters from another. Only then does it occur to him that Umaru was tricking him, since she only wanted him to enter so they'd have a higher chance of winning. As the tournament continues, Taihei ends up against Ebina in the finals and wins against her. As the two walk back home, Taihei feels bad for defeating feeding her and gives her the Necolumbus anyways. As Taihei reaches home, Umaru attacks him for giving Ebina the plushie, while Ebina in her apartment is hugging the plushie, flustered, calling Taihei Oni-san. She recalls at one point that when she came to Tokyo from the countryside, everyone would stare at her and no one would look her in the eye, except for a 
of course, Taihei. He's always been kind to her and treated her like an actual person instead of an object. Just before tea day, and I mean test day by that, Umaru procrastinates despite her brother's insistence that she should study. However, seeing as how Umaru always gets good grades, he isn't too worried about it. Later that night, when the two fall asleep, Umaru dreams that she's in the military and they're facing up against the test questions. Even after a hard fight against them, she ends up dying. Realizing she could get fewer marks, Umaru jumps onto Taihei in the middle of the night and asks him to help her study, which he ends up doing. Poor guy. He just can't seem to catch a break. At school, a girl, Kirie, appears to be staring at Umaru all day. Everyone seems to think that she hates Umaru and Umaru can only wonder what reason there is to hate her. However, one day as Umaru is in her chibi form, Kirie shows up at her house looking for her. Just as Umaru thinks her cover has been blown and her true side has been revealed, Kirie doesn't seem to recognize her and thinks of her chibi form as Umaru's younger sister. Being the deceitful person she is, Umaru immediately lies that yes, she's Umaru's younger sister, Komaru. Kirie explains that she's only here to give back Umaru's lost student ID card. So the next day at school, Umaru asks if Kirie wants to walk with her home. Extremely happy, Kirie immediately agrees. However, the walk is short-lived when she finds out Ebina will be coming with them too. Knowing Ebina is her close friend, Kirie now thinks of her as a rival and runs off. Perhaps the best part is when Taihei and Chibi Umaru watch a horror movie together. Even though painfully scared, Umaru keeps on a poker face and bluffs to Taihei that she isn't scared. However, as he goes for groceries and Umaru is left alone, she recalls scenes from the movie. To add to the fire, a thunderstorm happens to come their way and the power goes out. Trying to get clothes inside, Taihei comes back inside only to find Umaru crying out Anisan and jumping on him. We all know that Umaru is a pure gamer. However, she's even better when it comes to arcade games. Be it the claw game or the shooting game, she always bags a ton of prizes. Dang, I wish I was able to do that too. Pretty cool. She's known as the legendary player UMR. As she enters the arcade, the staff try their best to make it hard for her. Eventually, Umaru politely asks them for a change of reward. Seeing her cute, polite mannerisms, the staff finally gives in. Later we see Taihei get a cat ornament from one of his former colleagues, Alex. Back in the day, Taihei had trained him for office work. With all smiles, Taihei accepts the gift and gives it to Umaru. Being the usual chibi, Umaru is ungrateful for it and says it's extremely ugly. Later that day, as she is playing, she accidentally stubs her toe on the table. Due to this, the porcelain made cat ornament falls and breaks. Scared that her brother will never buy her anything ever again, she makes an effort to repair it. However, she forgets what the face of the cat looked like. Eventually, she has to tell Taihei the truth. She fears he might scold her, but Taihei casually accepts her apology, inquiring how she got the repairing kit. Umaru grinningly answers that she used Taihei's card. It seems like Taihei just can't win. After that, the two go back to the arcade, where a gaming contest is held. One of the participants of the tournament is, you guessed it right, Silfin. Playing as UMR, Umaru enters the contest, reaching the finals and going up against Silfin. However, despite being an elite gamer, she's on the verge of losing. When Silfin sees Alex, who is shown to be her brother at the venue, she runs away all flustered. With the opponent withdrawing, UMR wins once again. As the semester ends, Umaru conquers the top spot again. Just as vacations begin, she's happy that she can spend all her time at the arcade without any schoolwork interrupting her life. But this excitement is short-lived when Silfin shows up and recognizes her as UMR. She challenges her to arcade games once more, claiming that UMR is her rival now since she lost to her. After playing for a while, Umaru explains to Silfin that people go to the arcade to have fun and be happy. So if it makes Silfin happy, then she's the winner. Hearing this, Silfin becomes happy and makes UMR her friend. Meanwhile, at home, Umaru spends time with Kirie as Komaru, being spoiled and getting everything done by Kirie. She enjoys the summer vacation in the air-conditioned room while Taihei is out working in the scorching heat. As Taihei returns, he sees Umaru sleeping on top of Kirie, who also happens to be sleeping. As he opens the window, a heat wave comes inside, waking the two up. We all know how that feels. It seems like someone opened the gateway to hell. One day while doing laundry, Taihei notices that Umaru doesn't have many clothes except her hamster costumes. So, he gives her money to go shopping with friends. Ebina, Kirie, and the graceful Umaru go out shopping. Shopping. The three try on several clothes until, eventually, Umaru passes by a game shop where she sees the Monster Fantasy V game. Captivated by the game's appeal, she weighs the clothes and games on a balance in her imagination, only to end up buying the game instead. When Taihei states that the clothes she bought seem a bit dull, she replies that it's the fashion these days. Later, we see Taihei at work when a girl seductively says hi 
lie to him. Taihei's friends ask him about the lunch he brings and who makes it. He answers that it's his sister. As his friends inquire if his sister is cute, Taihei, with an expressionless face, answers no, she's normal. On his way back, he buys some beef, and as he enters the house, he finds Umaru sleeping. For a moment, he looks at her smile and smiles himself, then finally, yeets her into oblivion. Ugh, we've all had that moment with our siblings. He then tells her that there's steak for dinner. Hearing this, Umaru becomes extremely happy. Another day and another new problem for Umaru as she can't find any cola to drink for her relaxing time. Despite it being very late at night, she sneaks outside to go to the convenience store while Taihei slumbers peacefully. Even though creeped out by the deafening silence and darkness, Umaru manages to buy cola and get home only to find Taihei already standing there as he scolds her for going out so late all alone. In another segment, Umaru Umaru and Kirie are playing games together when Taihei joins in. The three play a board game where Umaru ends up as a king. Taihei as a chef with three kids and Kirie, well, she ends up broke. That sounds like me. <laughs> okay, let's move on. At home now, Taihei is working on a presentation for his meeting when Umaru continuously annoys him. I mean, just imagine hearing honey, honey, honey 24 7. So, Taihei decides to put a curtain between them to increase his work efficiency. At first, Umaru sees this as an opportunity to laze around without any scolding. However, she gets bored without Taihei pretty quickly, and Taihei also seems to miss Umaru. So he takes off the curtains, and the usual routine begins. Finally, the day that Taihei's Himoto arrived in the world has come, and Umaru has a fully planned wish list. However, Taihei doesn't seem to remember it. Without saying anything, Umaru puts on a poker face and goes to school. All of her classmates give her plenty of gifts. She gets bummed thinking everyone remembered except Taihei when she remembers him being unusually kind that morning. She runs back home only to find Taihei preparing for her birthday celebration. Catching him red-handed, she starts to embarrass Taihei. As the weekend finally approaches, Umaru is being her usual self at home and lazing around. While Taihei is managing the work around picking up trash, he asks Umaru if she needs a particular box she had left lying around. At first, Umaru simply says that she doesn't need it. However, once she finds out that Taihei threw it away and that he had some different facial expressions for an action figure, she tells Taihei about it. Even though Umaru couldn't care less about the expressions, she notices her brother feeling guilty and starts guilt tripping him so that he doesn't yell at her all day. And then she goes to sleep. When Umaru wakes, she can't find Taihei anywhere and begins to tear up. As Taihei enters the house, he gives her a new doll to replace the figure. Dang! Get me an Oni-chan like Taihei too. One day after work, Taihei and his colleague Bomber are drinking out when he insistently comes to Taihei's house to check if he has a girlfriend or not. What he finds is the adorable looking chibi Umaru sleeping. Bomber, let me just tell you, appearances can be deceiving. In another segment, as Taihei is coming back from work, he finds a cute cat and follows it till he gets lost. He recalls the residential area from his memory, but can't remember when he came there. He then gets a glimpse of Umaru calling him by his name. He wonders why that occurred to him. He finds the cat again, and as he pets it, he recalls that he came here with his mother, a splitting image of Umaru, when he used to go to school. Recalling the memory, Taihei finally finds his way back home. Winter has arrived and God seems to be sprinkling snowflakes from the heavens, so Taihei and Umaru decide to bring the Kotatsu out for which Umaru surprisingly helps. As she lies down inside of the warm embraces of the kotatsu while eating her usual combo of potato chips and cola, she falls asleep mere moments later. Christmas arrives and Umaru is excited. However, Taihei seems to be working overtime. His colleague Bomber suggests he wear a Santa suit, which he does end up wearing. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and a sulking Umaru wonders who it is. As she opens the door, she finds Kirie with Taihei dressed as a Santa coming home with presents. As Christmas goes by, New Year's Eve arrives. Bomber decides to do the countdown with Taihei and Umaru. The three sit and watch funny videos together until the clock hits 11. Since an hour is left, Bomber brings out the beers and snacks he had bought for Taihei and himself. Seeing him, Umaru also brings out her snacks. She gets worried at first that Taihei might scold her. However, since Taihei says nothing, Umaru screams, Onichan has given his blessing! However, just before midnight, Umaru ends up falling asleep. So Bomber and Taihei spend the first hour of the new year drinking. The next day, Taihei takes Umaru to the shrine with her to say a prayer. However, when Umaru asks him about it, he says that prayer has more of a chance to come true if not told to anyone. Just as the episode is about to end, we see Taihei's team lead Kano being sad and alone on Christmas Eve. However, a text from Taihei cheers her up. Now, sweet old Kirie is making cookies for Umaru and Komaru. Poor girl still hasn't realized that they're the same people. However, she keeps ending up burning them. She keeps trying until she finally gets them right and gives the cookies to Umaru at school and Komaru and Taihei at home. 
However, when she comes home, she realizes she mistakenly gave Taihei the burnt cookies. Later, Ebina invites Umaru over to make some chocolates. Realizing that the challenge seems a bit too hard for her, Umaru calls Taihei. Taihei gets excited seeing Ebina's luxurious kitchen and starts explaining the history of chocolate. When he mentions that usually, a person makes homemade chocolate for someone they like, Umaru wonders if Ebina likes someone. After a while, Ebina makes a heart-shaped chocolate. All flustered up, she ends up writing deer on it. However, she then realizes she can't write Taihei there, so she ends up writing her own name and eats it. At home, Umaru suddenly gets a call from Silphian, and the two visit an anime store together. Both talk about their brothers. Silphian then claims she's a lot like UMR, making them sisters. This makes Umaru really happy. Another day, Kirie shows up at Komaru's place while Umaru has gone out. So Taihei and Kirie awkwardly sit together. The two spend hours sitting down in awkward silence until Kirie finally mutters that she's sorry for the burnt cookies and that she forgot to replace them, giving Taihei the newly baked ones. Just then, Umaru arrives back home and Taihei looks at her with a furious gaze for being so late. One day, Umaru catches a cold and wants Taihei to stay with her. However, he still goes to work. Eventually, Umaru gets better and plots revenge on Taihei. He catches a cold the next day, and as Umaru comes back home after buying tons of ingredients to torture Taihei, she finds him extremely feverish and almost unconscious. Umaru immediately worries about him and spends the rest of the time looking after him until he gets better. As the episode progresses, Umaru reflects more on her and Taihei's actions and keeps on realizing how much Taihei sacrifices for her sake. From the tiniest to the greatest things, he and ensures that Umaru lives a good life, like making her a variety of healthy lunches. As Umaru comes back home, she asks Taihei to stir fry the green onions next time he adds them to the hamburger. Taihei is amazed to hear this and wonders if Umaru is feeling alright. One day, Umaru, while watching TV, mistakenly spills cola over the internet modem, breaking it. Having no internet at home, she spends time at an internet cafe. However, she gets bored by the end and doesn't use up all of her time since she wants to spend time with Taihei. She's coming around, guys. She's coming around. Finally, we get a flashback of Kano, Taihei, and Bomber in high school. Similar to Umaru, Taihei was also an A-grade student. The trio decides to go to an arcade where Taihei wins a plushie, and as he returns home, he gives it to a baby Umaru. Returning back to the present, we see Umaru having bought a ton of plushies again due to which Taihei gets angry. However, we get a glimpse of the plushie Taihei brought Umaru 10 years ago sitting on a shelf as a distant yet close memory. As the series is coming to a close, we see Ebina coming over to Umaru's with a packet of rice from her hometown, Akita. Taihei sees this as an opportunity to make Umaru eat healthily. However, suddenly Ebina's stomach growls. I mean, talk about embarrassing. So, Taihei invites her to have dinner with them. After the two finish off dinner, Ebina's stomach growls again and Taihei orders pizza for the two. So, as usual, Umaru ends up getting her way again. As their characters' lives progress, Taihei has a big meeting coming up where he has to submit a proposal. Expecting him to fail, Umaru buys a snack for him. However, when she finds out that his proposal got accepted, she's shocked and wonders if she should have just bought a cake for him. Monsoon season arrives and it's raining heavily everywhere. The weather is humid and everything feels moist, bringing Umaru and Kirie's energy levels down. However, Taihei tells them to be excited about the summer and when it arrives, he, along with Umaru and her friends, will take them to the beach to have fun. After listening to this, Umaru and Kirie's spirits light up and they get excited about it. As summer finally arrives, Umaru gets excited about ice cream and everywhere she goes, be it to the arcade or her home, all she does is eat ice cream. She even buys a small freezer to store ice cream behind Taihei's back. However, he eventually finds out about it and scolds her. After watching an advert for a car on TV, Umaru persuades Taihei to buy that car. However, of course, she has ulterior motives, and that is to buy a spacious car where she can lie down and sleep more, even when Taihei and her go to school or on a trip. At first, Taihei thinks they wouldn't need this big of a car. However, Umaru says she wants her friends to go back to the beach with her too. This makes Taihei think that perhaps Umaru is thinking about someone other than herself too. Forced by Umaru, Taihei takes the car on a test drive. However, he gets nervous seeing plenty of kids and pets around him. So, in the end, they decide to go to the beach with Bomber in his car. Umaru, Taihei, Bomber, Kirie, and Ibina meet up. Realizing Bomber is actually her brother, Kirie immediately hides her face, trying not to reveal her identity to her brother. 
Not finding the chibi Umaru coming on the trip, both Kirie and Bomber wonder where Komaru is. At the beach, Kirie confides in Umaru, telling her she's grateful for meeting Komaru and Taihei. First, she wasn't able to communicate at all. However, after meeting them, she can finally talk a little. She finally tells Umaru that Bomber is her brother, but he's so stupid that it makes her embarrassed, so she doesn't tell anyone. Seeing Kirie all emotional, Umaru is about to come out with the truth when she sees birds attacking Bomber, and the conversation shifts. It seems like God is on your side today, Umaru. As the trip ends and Taihei comes home after a long day at work, he asks Umaru if she wants to visit the mountains on his next day off. However, Umaru dismissively talks to him regarding the idea and asks him to buy her a Jumpu manga. If only he had remembered it before, he would have saved himself the hassle. Angered by this, Taihei yells, you little Himoto, and just like that, we're back to square one, and the series ends. This concludes Himoto Umaro-chan for us, a pretty good and light-hearted anime overall. Even though we don't find massive character developments in the series, it's still a pretty good show and relatively relatable. I mean, rarely does it happen that the titans invade us or a bald-headed hero with immaculate strength shows up. So if you want a break from the heartbreaking, gory animes, this show should be your go-to. Please leave a like or comment and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any great animes. Until then, stay tuned for more amazing anime recaps.